Hi everybody, it's Q and welcome back to my tapes. In this video, we are going to be discussing how Quen living with Diplo is not normal at all. Um, the man is worth, hold on, let me check. His net worth is 26.3 million USD currency. If he really wanted to, I guess, support Quen and her living in LA, um, he could have got her a penthouse. <laughs> like... I, you know, and that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about how it's weird as hell. And anybody trying to really explain this away on why it's not weird is delusional. Um, and yeah, if that's anything that you'd like to hear or hear someone discuss, <laughs> then keep on watching. Let's begin. Hi everybody, um, hope your week has been going well. So I'm actually filming this on Tuesday, October 27th. I am editing a couple of other videos. I wasn't even sure that I was even gonna talk about anything new because I feel like every single time I edit these videos, another idea comes up and then I'm filming something else. So yeah, hopefully this will be probably one of the first things I edit so I can get it out early. In that case, this will be tape two, side A. Um, in this video, like I said in the introduction, I really want to talk about Diplo and, it, and no, no, no. I actually don't want to talk about Diplo. I don't really want to talk about Diplo as a person and how he doesn't necessarily produce like that. Like, I don't want to, I don't really want to get on him or his career. I just more so want to comment on the commentary or the insinuation that when this news broke that, you know, Quinn was living with this man in this man's house in like Palm Springs, SoCal, that like people were trying to say that it was normal. And that's really what I want to talk about. I just wanted to say that it's not normal. I just want to say that it's not normal. And I'm going to be using a lot of alleges like that Quibi video. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> like, okay. Um, it's not normal to live with like some 40 year old man that you don't know. Um, I do, I do want to say this. So something I do want to say about the entertainment industry and like quote unquote mentors, like, so I do want to say that it's not as though we have not seen like any sort of history of certain, like maybe prominent actors or families or entertainers taking people under their wing, sheltering them, making sure that they have a place to say that is safe, making sure that they're fed, making sure that they're mentored and cultivated in a good environment. So I kind of want to start there. I want to start in the conversation of black historical entertainers, black American entertainers, musicians, um, directors, actors who have in fact sheltered young black talent. Um, but as you know, and I'm sure you guys can think of a few, like the Will the Smith family, like they have taken people under their wing. Um, they have mentored them, you know, and obviously there was the debacle that was going on. But, you know, they have mentored and like taken kids under their wing um, to help nurture their talent. As we know, the Smiths, they own like a production company as well. Um, a few notable people. I don't want to mention the, the debacle that fell out. So I'll mention... Um, I almost said Tiger Woods, sorry. Um, Jordan, um, sh she lived with the Smiths. Like a couple of other people have lived with the Smiths. Um, you know, I don't know, to take care of them. Just like, are you okay? I don't know, you know, so mentor another prominent person. And so what, I, okay, re okay, pause. Before I even mention the second person, which this person is Denzel Washington. The only reason why I bring this up is that these people have a track record. These people have a track record of being dedicated to black arts. They have a track record of being dedicated and put in action and not like performative activism or whatever, whatnot. Like they have put in the work. They have put in like there are like there is a paper trail of the of the smiths caring deeply about black arts and black performance um there is a track record of denzel washington caring about the arts and black performance and black art and young black american kids who need essentially resources and access to develop their craft young black kids who do not have this access in their neighborhoods um, or maybe they do have these performance centers and people in their neighborhood, but maybe the neighborhood itself or maybe the centers or like the performance or the theaters um, 
they might not have the resources that a Denzel Washington would have or that the Smiths family would have, right? And these people are worth like millions. Like I think the Smiths family is worth like, I think I think Will Smith is worth like 200 million. Hold on, let me check. OMG, okay, so I just checked. Will Smith is worth $350 million, okay? So, so you know, they have a lot of resources in comparison to maybe the locality community resources they have. And most importantly, really what I'm trying to highlight here is that there is a track record there is a paper trail um yeah so i kind of wanted to start with there so i want to start with acknowledging that point that yeah we have seen people take people under their wing i mean and and there's so many people i just mentioned two people but if you're into if you know a little bit about black american art black american theater um black american actors and singers especially like you know that went around doing chitlin circuits like they really helped each other out and there were a lot of spaces in which black american artists of any kind like you know theaters actor you know singers were able to find different people that would help them stay at their house when they were poor like and we've even heard this like kevin hart tiffany haddish like so many so many instances of of black american people really helping each other and and that this is a very this is a very important note that i'm gonna get into on why i'm just like even if even if Quinn is staying with Diploma, as I kind of want to call him, um, even if Quinn is staying with Diploma, I do feel like <laughs> I'm just like of all the people. If we really are trying to explain this weirdo behavior away of just like I, you know, we have not heard of this person having any sort of track record of really caring about the nurturing of Black artists is <sighs> the first thing, right? But like, even if we tried to, ex even if y'all were trying to explain it away, it's like, I'm not even hearing the fact that like, there's no track record, but also this person don't even, what sort of art are they making that I feel like is culturally moving society? Like out of all the people that we really want to explain this strange behavior from, I would not say that this man is not, he's not in tune with the sort of culture and music and ideas that I feel like come out of the black American community. <laughs> so I kind of want to start there. Um, or yeah, so that's part one. So let's get into part two. Um, you know, why is this weird? Like, why is this weird? Just in case anybody is just not clear besides just having a paper trail of just like, this is not that. So what I just said in terms of these actors and these people and these musicians and the art artists and comedians fostering and caring about other black people in their community, what, why is this like different? Why is this not, like, this is not the same. So this is not the same. He doesn't have a track record. He's not from this culture. As we know, Diplo is not a black man. Like we have not seen any sort of track record. And then there's also the nuance. There's the nuance of being able to depend on intra-community resources and intra-community people in order to help yourself advance, right? Um, another good example is, and this isn't in the black community, but another example is like Chinese restaurants and um, Chinese people who will come in, um, who came in actually, I'm, I'm referring like, you know, 80s, 90s, you know, they came in, you know, they tried to help their family get here. And there's a thing that I was told um, from another, like from a business owner, right? Um, and they're in restaurant and they, they told me what their friend who runs Chinese like chains, say that they do so they all they they come first they struggle they build it on their own and then they bring in their family or bring in or mentor bring it's either their family or friends or like people who are trying to come in and like stabilize themselves in the united states right um they have all of them i mean allegedly you know labor laws uh you know trigger you know what i mean labor laws possible labor law abuse um they would um have them all I guess like live in you know just a closed space like they would all just struggle live in the same house like 13 to two rooms you know 13 to maybe one room and they would essentially teach them the ropes they would work you know graveyard shift they would clean they would scrub you know they would alternate different 
positions of running the restaurant. Um, so like cleaning, custodian positions, cleaning, cashier, and then of course cooking and chefing and learning just, in, and then distribution operations, like where do we buy, who do we buy these things from? Where can you get these materials from? Where can you buy bulk produce from? Which farms do we need to contact you with? And so they essentially rotate them around the different roles of running these, these Chinese restaurants. And then I think it's like after about like four months, they give them a location. They're able, oh yeah, okay, another note about that labor law, hashtag trigger warning, labor labor law abuse, human rights, you know, abuse, um, is they also pay them like minimum wage. And this is like even in California, like they'll pay them like $7.50, $10, $12. And then essentially what happens is after like four months, um, the owner, like the person who ha- who has, who owns it and who runs like the bigger restaurant, they will give the person who has like trained and done this, they'll give them like a fat check of like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, dollars And maybe even give them like a location, like this is where you can start out from. And they sign away the deed of that location or the property or the lead, you know, whatever property that they bought so that they can run their own restaurant. And essentially they do the same thing and they're like they're they're encouraged to keep on doing the same thing well i obviously we obviously might have comments on what could be tweaked there <laughs> on is, is was there no way you know you guys like there was there no way you know 13 people to a room and 750 an hour and like where does this end like is there any guarantee so obviously i'm not saying that this is foolproof i'm not saying that there are not any sorts of issues or stipulations or maybe even some labor right you know, issues that might be in that market. So I I also want to make sure that I'm not kind of over speaking actual, just like labor right violations that people have been like, dang, they did not give me the restaurant. You know, they took my passport. You know what I mean? So I'm not explaining that away, but let's just assume like a, a solid average. Let's just go with what I said and a good faith argument for a second. This is very God, I can't imagine a journalist listening to this. Um, (laughs) let's go on a good faith argument right now that that is, that is exactly what it appears to be. Um, nothing more, nothing less Then yeah. It's just like, okay, they're providing an environment to foster people who are looking for that economic stability. They help them grow. They, um, what is it? Huddle their resources. And then once they're able to save and teach you the ropes, they're able to, with trust, give you the resources to do it on your own. you make your money, assuming, you know, obviously if this person is giving them deed to property, they're able to buy the property. So hopefully you can, you know, make solid enough money. And obviously restaurant businesses, like, you know how that is. The profit margin is very low. So, you know, but they're able to kind of cultivate and huddle resources and then throw them out into the world so that they can fly and help them do the same thing, bring chickens back to their nest. You know, all these idioms, metaphors, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the reason why I kind of go into that metaphor and go into the examples is that like, essentially suffice to say, it's not as though we are not aware of communities trying to huddle resources in some way to help cultivate people, send them out, huddle more resources, cultivate more people, send them all out, you know? So, so yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I don't even know what I was saying in the beginning of the part B, but let's go to part C. Um, It's not normal. I don't really like the language kind of surrounding people trying to normalize this. Um, And that's really the part C of this. It, It is very weird. It is very strange. And I feel I feel uncomfortable with people trying to say what it's not you know what I mean if you know that you you guys are doing weirdo shit like I I just I just I I feel very uncomfortable with just we are trying to mask and pretend as though this behavior is is not as abnormal as it seems using all these contractions here in the sentence nobody is going to convince me that this 19 year old young black girl who by the way has enough means and i believe like she has made enough money she has bought she owns two properties if i recall she owns a house in ohio and if i recall she also owns a house in texas like she has enough money she has enough deals coming in she had enough deals coming in she had you know whatever ad revenue whatever's going on with her finances is set up to the point where she is okay she is not poor she is not poor. So I also want to make sure that we are being really clear here about the language of, 
you know, sometimes when we want to talk about these issues as it pertains to like these black girls and like these kind of situations of people being put in situations in order to, you know, just these like very unfortunate, duplicitous, you know, shady situations involving black women. I feel like sometimes people start using very inappropriate diction to almost explain away the bad situation as though the situation is not bad and maybe you try to throw anti-black you know misogynoir like kind of maybe sexist kind of language and innuendos and i just feel like it, it's distracting it's distracting when having these conversations even if quen was poor even if quen was poor she came from a poor family and you know what look this white man was like i'm gonna come save you you know like i still don't think that it would be appropriate to talk to come crazy at her and use kind of this strange language of oh she deserved it and oh 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 she you know a home wrecker and a, a gold digger just like the rest of these negresses like you know i don't really it's kind of it's a lot yeah it's a it's a lot like you guys need to chill right so spare me spare me the message miss sent <laughs> Misogynoir. Oh my God. Now I can't. Misogyn. Mis misogynoir. Spare me the misogynoir and the sexism coded language. Like just weird, like weirdo language. And I heard the same thing with the R. Kelly thing. And that's kind of really where <laughs> we're headed, obviously. And like, this is not, this is weird. It is as weird as it sounds and it's not normal. And nobody's going to be able to explain away this for me personally. Um, and, and all of you trying to like, explain this away y'all are low-key y'all are weirdos but you know the same thing with the r kelly thing where people were like oh but you know she's fast and oh she isn't she didn't she become an adult at some person why does she know better mm -mm -mm. blaming these people oh they're fast chill like just disgusting disgusting repulsed some of you some of you repulse me disgusting okay a 19 year old living with anybody who are not her parents or her friends or like close family members maybe like you are also or maybe you're in like a contracted like living situation where your name is on the lease like for example like a dorm like a dorm or an apartment like you both have obligation to the space that you live in so even if you might not know each other you are paying for your rent like you know what you mean you have a legal obligation of some kind to the property that you are leasing from a properly property owner right so so spare me spare me let's get into like the second part of this part c of this is weird it is as weird as it sounds is this and this is kind of the crux of like really kind of what i want to say here um <laughs> about this um so out of all the people <laughs> so out of all the people you want to go and foster your talent girl diploma out of all the people like if i'm looking if i'm so let's just go on data and that's what i'm trying to say like i'm trying to i've made i've made if you watch that quibi video i say something about like the alleged money laundering scheme overpaid executive money laundering to pay off b and d grade projects that weren't bought by netflix and hbo like i literally said i literally said i literally said alleged and i i maintain that it's all alleged right but one of the things that i said in that video is that like as much as i know i was like giggling and laughing and i literally said that i think i said this verbatim if if, I, if not i'm obviously paraphrasing but i literally said the fact that I'm joking and I'm just like, oh yeah, Quibi, like they use Quibi as like a money laundering front, like allegedly, you know, and I was giggling and laughing, but I was like, no, 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 but really though, but really like none of this makes any sense. It's almost as though you guys intentionally fail. Like, I, 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 I don't know. It's just like, there's no way that y'all had this much money and you just, there was nobody to provide market research. There was nobody that told you the sort of short form content that people watch on your phones. Like even the premise, even the premise, even like the diction surrounding like these, these, these executives talking, I'm like, did you guys fail on purpose? Like, this is like common knowledge, like where people are watching the short form content, even before we started getting a lot of news about TikTok. So it's just like, I mean, come on. So let's look at the data. So let's look at the data of black American artists Let's talk about, let's talk about singers because obviously it's music, right? So let's talk about musician. 
the amount of black American musicians that are making culture changing music. And they don't need to be big, huge celebrities, big, huge singers like Beyonce, Nicki Minaj, like, you know, singers, rappers, you know, musicians, etc. Like, no, like when we talk about black American artists that are making culture changing music, music. Out of all the inspirations, <laughs> y'all know where I'm going with this. Out of all the inspirations, out of all the influence, out of all the innovation taken from and learned and innovated, continuously innovated upon by current black American musicians, Diplo's name is not on the list. Do you want me to repeat that? Out of all of the black American musicians that are currently innovating, upon music that was made. That music, that source, the bibliography, the inspiration is not Diplo. Out of all the people, out of all the people that we're learning with, out of all the people that you could be learning from and you're congregating and you're, you're having to live in their house and be mentored under them and make music and write and, and really just like grind out this person is paying for your rent. This person is paying for your, which we're going to get to in a second. Cause I think I mentioned this at the beginning. You could be, you could have just paid for her rent. You could have gotten a building and, and, and just paid and funded. It's just like a, a what is it? Um, like a, it's like, uh, like a startup. Oh my God. I'm so sorry like a venture capital, like accelerator, an accelerator. Like you could be, you could get a building, like you could get a building. You could rent out a series of apartments and say, you know what, you have a year, cultivate your talent. Let's work on your art. Let's grind it out. Let's work on your voice. Let's get you a vocal coach. Let's, let's train you. Let's help you work on your writing. Let's help you work on your voice. No, but, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. But yes, the music that I find inspiration from, the music that makes waves now, today, that has a lot of popular culture influence. And and honestly, it, it doesn't need to be the same genre. Like, you know, obviously right now it's rap, right? But like continuously has come out of black American culture and minds and ideations, ideations. Diplo is not an inspiration to me. Black American, black artists, black people who are not even ethnically black American take inspiration from black American culture. I have no clue out of all the people you saying you get mentored under. Diplo, Diplo, girl, girl, come on, come on, come on. Okay, and with that, let's go on to part D. And part D is this. Um, you know, so, okay, yeah. So part C, that was the, it's weird. Nothing about this looks normal. Even if we were trying to assume just for a second, he was a mentor. Mentor for what? Mentor for what? He's not inspirational. He's not an inspiration. He's not an inspiration. He's not an inspiration. And he's not someone that I know no shade. I just, I don't, what am I getting mentored for? Like, is he even like a great businessman? Like, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, if we are going by what some of y'all are saying, oh, he makes good music. Does he make good music? Does he make culture changing music out of the black American artists that people look up to and people rever and people want to be like, even in money, even in capitalism, Diplo's name is not coming up. So that was part C. Huh, part D. Okay. Um, okay, look. So if, <laughs> let's say he did care, maybe he's not really an inspiration. Maybe he's like a small mentor, you know, he's a celebrity, he cares about her, you know, he has some connections and he wants to help her. Why does she have to live at your house? Why is she at your house? But why is she at your house though? Like, why is she at your house though? Like, but why is she at your house though? Like, you know, what, is there any reason why she's at your house? Like, I, is she, why, why is she at your house? Like. I, you don't have enough money out of the $26 million in assets, half of which is probably liquid. At least one fourth of that money is liquid, like liquid. You don't have enough money to pay for her to get an apartment in LA. I get it, you know, Texas buying a house, Ohio getting a house, you know, you, you know she, she got that shit on the dollar. We talking about, we talking about California housing prices here. You're telling me that you don't, what is, what is 26 divided by four? That's about five mil, five, five, five mil liquid. You don't have any amount of money to get this girl an apartment. 
Really? Am I really? Are we? Really, am I supposed to believe that? No. The answer is no. Is is the answer is no. Um, another thing that I want to say. Um, so that's part D and part E. I at this point I just want to make a few offshoot comments that aren't tied into like big boulder. I'm sure if I wrote a script I could have consolidated this into either um, the earlier four parts. But I kind of want to say some offshoot things right now. Um, okay. So few things that I'm thinking of <laughs> as I kind of wind down and end out this video. Um, Azealia Banks has actually spoken about, <laughs> Azealia Banks has actually spoken about, <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna link the clip right here. Yeah. And you know, in, in a lot and of ways- Diplo ain't doing nothing for you. Oh my God, wait, 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 wait. Did you hear, did you hear that Diplo's still like having sex with like teenage girls? No, yes, yes. No, I... honey, like, no. Let me tell you, I used to have sex with Diplo when I was 17. Like, yeah. Diplo definitely found me on fucking MySpace. Because like, <laughs> I've, I've, like, always given him credit for fucking launching my career off. But yeah, I had to give him some teenage pussy to do it. Yeah, no, Diplo is praying. No, on... Diplo's praying. He's praying. And he's he's always been, like, praying on kind of, like, young ethnic girls. Like, you know. MIA, all of them. Yeah, I, I, I think MIA was up some age. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Diplo's got a rotten dick. He's got a rotten dick, and he's he's weird. Like, I think he goes on, like, sex tourism kind of things. Like, I, I feel like the kind of, like, worldly global music shit that, because he doesn't produce any of it, I feel like it's all just been a front for sex tourism. Very, no, I could see that. You know, I could, I could totally see Diplo in, like, the favela, like, fucking some, like, broke 14-year-old girl, like, giving her tickets to the Major Lazer show and, like, just leaving her where she is, you know? So, also women watch your fucking daughters around Diplo. So I want you to digest that for a second, the clip that you just heard. I want you to digest that for a second. Um, <laughs> so, you know, another comment kind of following that is that it's not as though we don't already have a history of Diplo being accused of grooming young girls. I believe that he just had a child by a black woman who coincidentally, um, not even like three months ago, not even like a month ago. Um, you know, allegedly, I'm, I'm giving a thought. And now at this point, I'm, I'm being truly messy at this point. I'm, I'm saying a few things. Who knows who made it to the end of this video? <laughs> um, I feel as though, I don't want to say like her boyfriend is a front or anything. Um, I think that they do care about each other. I think they probably are dating, but I think if we are really to ignore, I, I, you know what I really, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that like, we already have a history of people who are being groomed, who have been groomed, who have like fronts, like they have boyfriends, they have, they've been, you know, they've been asked to maintain certain sort of relationships so that they don't get in trouble. Obviously people have gone to, people have been indicted. People have gone to federal prison. People are on the stands right now for this sort of behavior um sodomizing and, and you know abusing people and kids and like you know all this sort of stuff um r kelly harvey weinstein like you know so i feel like it, it wouldn't be a shock to me that if these things are going on of like what are you doing let's say that let's say that we are making an assumption allegedly that diplo is sleeping with quen in order to advance her career it does not strike me as strange if she has also been requested to maintain like what looks like to be normal relationships with other people like i mean come on like since we since we all want to be conspirators like i mean come on come on another comment that i kind of want to make following along this line is on the entertainment industry the entertainment industry is not holy the entertainment industry is not holy and there are documentation. There is literally history and documentation and receipts civilly, federally, criminally on people abusing and taking advantage of children and women and young boys and, and young children, people for the promise of getting promoted and getting a career. Something else that I want to say, another comment on this is this. If you are a creator, listen to me very carefully. And I'm working, I'm still editing my TikTok video, my black TikTokers video, but I kind of have something to say also. This is kind of, I think will be one of the last comments I'll say and then I'll close out. 
Another thing that strikes me strange is this. If she does want to make music and she's like, how can I get my music out there? How do I distribute? How do I become this? How do I become a star? How can I get put on? Like, girl, you are put on. You have the audience and you own your own distribution. You are, no, you don't own your own. You do not own Instagram, but you do have an audience and you do have by way access to large distribution. There is no reason why you are not hopefully able to hire a strategist and they should be black American. They should be a business person, black American that has experience with getting people on that independent shit. I feel like if you are Gen Z, and this is something that I talked about in that Quibi video, and something that you'll probably hear me talk about a lot because maybe it's because I'm Gen Z and, you know, just a lot of things on why I feel like I care. But I feel like if you have an audience, you're black, you Gen Z, you have an audience, you have access to distribution. You know what, at this point, if you don't know how to make money from your audience, but you have an audience and you're black and you're doing things independently, email me. Go to my description box right now, email me, let's fucking chat. I know some people, let's chat, let's talk, let's talk. But for those of you that are just listening, there's no reason why you shouldn't be trying different ways to get your art out there and you actually, and you own distribution and you have an audience. She has an audience. If you're clever and you have the right people on your team, you will be able to get your music out there. And if you use tried and historically tested ways in which black American artists have gotten their art out there, you should have no problem. Either way, you're going to have to start there anyways. And what is, what is there? What is this place? Let me give you some, it, it's not, it's not, I'm not giving you anything new. Like I literally just said historical. You need to go on a Chitlin circuit. You need to go on a Chitlin circuit. These are spaces in which black communities have access to art within their communities, by their communities, for their communities. That's pretty much what it is. There were places in which black people could go perform in the Jim Crow era and before and after. Megan Thee Stallion did this. Beyonce did this. Destiny's Children <laughs> did this. If you watch, um, oh shit, I forgot the show. It was that show on Netflix with five. Um, I'm forgetting it. Um, Umbrella Academy, Destiny Children, um, you know, if you, if you know, you know, recent season. Um, but it's just like you either way, like all these people, all these people that we, Nicki Minaj, she did this, all these people that you see that are advancing their career, that are black, that you look up to, Chloe and Howley did this. Chloe and Howley went on a Chitlin circuit. Chloe and Howley are still on a Chitlin circuit. Chitlin circuit is not just like maybe physical places, but like just spaces in which information and ideas and art is accessible to the black community. You have to do this anyways. There, I, I would say like, when we talk about black American musicians who have made it, artists who have made it, who are really getting out there, very, very rarely have they not gone on a Chitlin circuit and their career blew up, if at all. You have to get some amount of people within your culture who believe in your work like I don't know I don't know because they and, and especially in and, and this this comment that this comment specifically is very country specific when we start talking about media consumption so if anybody's like why does she keep saying black American like who you know obviously this is a black American conversation this is an African American this is a, a, a conversation like Quinn is you know she's black we live in the states like I live in the states like this conversation is very specific also the reason why I say black American specifically is because Black Americans, ethnically, Black American people make up the majority of the racially Black people in the United States, obviously. Um, but obviously, and this is something that I talked about in the Quibi video, Black Americans are one of the largest, if not the largest media consumers within the United States. So so it, there's a method to my madness, right? There's a method to like the stuff that I'm saying. Like, I, so I'm not just like talking out of my ass, right? I'm not just talking to talk. Like there is precedent, there is data, there is market research, there is history. Very rarely will you ever see a black artist, even if they're not ethnically black American, blow up or advance their career within the United States without black American support, which means you gonna have to appear and you gonna have to make sure that you're gonna need to have black people culturally comment on your music, good or bad. That's it, that's it, that's it. Even if you make rock, even if you make 
funk, even if you make screamo music, even if you make this alternative music, even if you're screaming into the fucking mic, like, even if you just draw circles on a, on a canvas, like, when we start talking about art consumption and ideas, if black American people, if black people within the United States are not able to culturally comment or converse or make commentary and memes, hashtag memes, like, memes aren't just like humor, like, they're, they're cultural comments. They're cultural commentaries on ideas. If black people are not able to culturally comment on the art that you make and buzz about it and talk about it and chit chat patterwhack about it, good luck. Good luck for all of you that think that the white man's ice is colder. Because some of you also, we're going to get to black TikToks in a second. I, I, you know, yeah, we're going to get to that. If you're confused on who to look for to help you advance your distribution and you already have an audience and you're just like, how do I make music? How do I do this? How do I? I don't know what to do. How do I? Just email me because like I'm under the impression that some of y'all is like, it's almost as though some of you might just want to say, I don't know people. All right. I know people. Email me. Email me. Look in the description box. Let's chat. Um, this concludes my video. These are my thoughts on the Quen and Diploma <laughs> Diplo situation. Um, 19 year old Quen living with Diplo is weird as hell. Um, he's not culturally moving black culture. I'd assume that if you want to make music, you're, you're going to need to get some amount of black people that really care and converse and make cultural commentary about your music. You know what? Even if he did care, but he's not really that innovative on the sort of music that you'll make, even if it's pop. Black people make pop, by the way. Black people, never mind. We, we're not going to get, okay. Um, <laughs> so you could have just stuck her in a penthouse. You could have just paid her rent. I think that some of the people that she has in her life and maintains in her life is a front or maybe she does care about these people. Maybe she really does care. These are real relationships, but like I'm under also the impression that she's asked to maintain these sort of relationships so that when these questions come up on why she's staying with a, an old ass man, you know, they can use these things to kind of brush it off. Um, it is weird. All of y'all trying to explain this away as though it's not weird, is weird in itself. That's sus as hell. Very suspicious. Very, very sus. Um, so yeah, please comment below. I really wanna hear your thoughts on this. I really, want, really wanna hear your thoughts on this. I really wanna hear your thoughts on this. And also, what did you think about that Azealia clip? Like, what did you what did you think about that Azealia clip? Like, let's talk about it. Like, what, what, what did you think about that Azealia clip? Okay, what did you think about it? What do you think about it? Okay, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if there's anything else you want me to chit chat about. Um, this is Q, this has been another one of my tapes. Side B, tape two. Thanks for watching, bye.